Australia's external policies towards Asia and elsewhere should be based on a rigorous analysis of our national interest. Such an analysis requires not just the standard security and economic considerations, uh, but a values dimension as well, uh, because uh, any disconnect between foreign policy and national values jeopardises the domestic support that is critical to achieving Australia's foreign policy objectives. Under the former government, Australia developed stronger strategic ties with key powers that share our democratic values, including Japan, India and Indonesia. We developed a mature, practical and ever closer relationship with China while managing differences over sensitive issues like ministerial contact with the Dalai Lama and Taiwan. Its guiding principles, as the former government put it, were shared interests and mutual respect. Some Australian commentators cling to the view that there is some singular entity called Asia, which we should approach in an undifferentiated fashion. But the coalition's engagement with our Asian neighbours has been based on mutual respect underpinned by an appreciation of Asia's diversity and of its strategic dynamics. The Howard government didn't attempt to preach uh, to or to browbeat our neighbours with unilaterally conceived utopian visions of new regional architecture. Instead, it listened to the region, identified where each country's interests coincided with ours, and focused on the importance of deepening bilateral relations with individual countries. One common feature of the diverse Asian region is the importance accorded to respectful consideration for others. Of course, our emphasis on building strong bilateral relationships did not mean neglecting regional cooperation. In fact, it helped to facilitate a leading role for Australia in regional bodies. The next coalition government will focus on building a strong strategic partnership with Japan based on the Howard government's joint declaration on security cooperation and the trilateral strategic dialogue. We will also try to conclude the free trade negotiations with Japan. We will overturn Labor's ban on uranium exports to India and look to build stronger military-to-military -military links, particularly on maritime cooperation. We will build on the Howard government's Lombok Treaty with Indonesia to broaden and deepen our security ties and also to broaden economic and education links. We will seek to expand Australian relations with other Southeast Asian nations such as Singapore and Vietnam. We will work enthusiastically with China, where it's in our mutual interest that this happen, but we won't pretend that there aren't important differences in the ways we do things. And as previously announced, a coalition government would work cooperatively with our regional friends to make existing regional bodies work better, rather than try to create a new one. But there's a domestic issue that shouldn't be ignored if our relationships with the rest of the world, including Asia, are to grow stronger. And that's the decline of the study of foreign languages, which constitutes a worrying erosion of our nation's broader international literacy. Confident that English is the world's second language, we have become linguistically lazy. And other English-speaking countries might be able to get away with this neglect, but we can't. Having fewer than 15% of our students leaving school competent in a foreign language, combined with the decline in foreign language study at university, has serious implications for how we relate to the wider world. The ability to speak a foreign language should be regarded as one of the hallmarks of a good education. The next coalition government will work with the states to reconsider and to reinforce the weightings and other incentives which are supposed to encourage high school students to stick with foreign languages. Shortage of teachers means that it would be difficult to make foreign language study compulsory anytime soon, but our ultimate objective should be to ensure that every student has at least some familiarity with other languages and that a significant percentage have studied a foreign language through to school leaving. Ladies and gentlemen, it's always a good time to focus on the links between Australia and Asia and what we can do here in this country 
to strengthen them. Regardless of our relationships elsewhere, our destiny is unavoidably that of our part of the world. Deepening and broadening relations with the peoples and nations of the Asia-Pacific region will therefore always be a central responsibility of the Australian Government.